Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Lily Reads. We have a positive video today. We are going to be talking about my most surprising books of the year. Now, how do you make it into my most surprising books of the year? It means I had low expectations. I was being nasty. I was being nasty. I had low expectations of you. I thought you were going to be a terrible book, but then I read you and you ate and you ate. You were a four or five star read and I was not expecting it. There are plenty of reasons of why I don't expect a book to be good. Number one, I listened to the hype. I listened to the hype. I listened to what people said and they said the book was bad. They said the book was bad but I already owned it and I try to read every book that I own even though people, you know, sometimes you get them and people say the shit's is bad. So I read it and I was like, okay, people don't like you. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it my best go. Then two, sometimes I don't like a book is because you're not my genre. I bought you because people said good things, but I usually don't read stuff from your genre. So I don't expect much from you. And third, I looked at the Goodreads, uh, the Goodreads, uh, number, whatever your Goodreads rating is, I do be looking and I do be judging because like Goodreads for me personally usually gets it right. The books that I really love sit about a 3.8. Like if something sits around a 3.8, it's usually, I'm probably gonna like it. That's when the books that people really like, I usually don't like. But like 3.8 is usually my sweet spot. Like, oh, I'm probably gonna like this book. But if something sits really low, usually I agree it deserves to sit really low. So these books either were one of those three things and I still fuck with them heavy. So let's get on into it. This book, Goodreads hates. Goodreads hates this book, Pizza Girl. People hate the book Pizza Girl. Let me tell you what the book Pizza Girl is about. So this book is about a girl who delivers pizzas. She's delivering pizzas one day and she is full bone pregnant. She has a baby on the way. She lives with the baby daddy and basically she's delivering pizzas to make ends meet. Then she meets a woman. She meets a woman who looks like she's also going through a tough time. She's also pregnant. She orders pizza, a pizza every single week and this girl, our main character, delivers her the pizzas and they're building a friendship and they're building a bond and you are just following them too as they build this relationship with each other. I don't know why Goodreads doesn't like this book. I do want to say something and stay with me. I find interesting that when white books, books about white women, let's take my year rest and relaxation, where like our character is aimlessly moving through life and she doesn't really have any direction. The book seems to not have any direction. Then we get to the end of the book. The character does something really stupid or bizarre. And then, you know, she learns her lesson from it and the book just ends. Or she doesn't learn her lesson, the book just ends. How when it's a character of color, the Goodreads rating thinks this is stupid and ridiculous. But when it's a white character, it's seen as like, seen as like angsty and like, Fem rage, like feminine rage, and oh yeah, black, oh white girl just going crazy. Like it's just interesting the way those two things are received when it comes to the general consensus. White women get to get this like genre that's just like, it really don't make no sense. The, the, the girl is failing through life and she does something bizarre and everyone's okay with that. But when you get books like Luster or this, the Goodreads rating kind of goes in on it, you know? I wonder why that is. I know why it is. But this book gets the blues, but like this book is no less coherent than all the other books about white women and their rage and not wanting to live the life that they live. That's what this book is. This book is about an Asian American woman who is just sick and tired. She's sick and tired of her life. She's sick and tired of all the things that she's had to deal with in her life that have led her to that moment. And she's trying to cling on to hope. She's trying to cling on to something new because she's tired of what's old. And people don't like this book, but I thought this book was brilliant. I thought this book was brilliant. Yet it's getting, tr this is one of the lowest rated books on my Goodreads, uh, on my Goodreads read books like one of the lowest rated and I don't get it I don't get how you could like a book like my year rest and relaxation but this is just like oh my god oh my god like nothing fucking happened she's so weird it's so funny like it seems like characters of color don't get to do ridiculous things like they get to do them but like they're just the book is judged harshly for having those things in a way that white books aren't judged as critically for having characters who are just as dysfunctional. I 
don't know. But guess what? I'll be judging them. Next, Taylor Jenkins read Carrie Soto is back. A book about tennis? A book about tennis by Taylor Jenkins Reid and her same little Evelyn Hugo uh, Malibu Rising World. I was like, ooh, ooh, I'm going to skip this one. I said I was going to skip it. I said that I was going to skip it. I'm happy I did it. We are following Carrie Soto. In this book, Carrie Soto is coming back to play tennis. Someone is challenging her record for most, like, majors. Are they called majors in tennis? What are they call in tennis? The like the big, the big, the big matches that you win. Anyway, challenging her for her record, and she wants to go get her record back. So throughout this book, you are following her, trying to get through to get her titles back and be the greatest tennis player of all time. You know, stuff like that. This book was so fun. This book was so fun. Like, no, it's not doing anything like amazing, but like it's just such a good book. Like, I'm so sorry. Sometimes we get so like Pizza Girl. Pizza Pizza Girl is deep on if you like believe in its message, you get the themes, you get what's going on. It's probably best read in like a in like a discussion forum, like coming together and reading it in a classroom. It's probably where a book like Pizza Girl is best read, where you guys discuss what you take from the book. But sometimes you just want a good book where you just like can read it and it's enjoyable. That's what Carrie Soto is back is. It was just so much fun to read. It was just such a fun book to sink your teeth into and read. Next. Project Tell Mary. Thought I wasn't gonna get it. Thought I wasn't gonna get it. Did many times my brain reject some of the things that was in this book? Yes. Because like me in science fiction, it's a little, it gets so, it gets so convoluted in my brain when it comes to science fiction. But this book is so good. This is about a guy who embarks on a journey to space to save the world. This book was so brilliant. So damn brilliant. It took me forever to read. Like my page, like is my my book is falling apart, but it's such a brilliant book. This book was so much fun. I love the, the main character, the way that he tells the story. It's so interesting. It had me hooked the entire time. The ending almost brought me to tears. I did. I knew I was going to appreciate this book, but I didn't know I was going to leave this book loving this book like having a really good time I look back on reading this book with fond memories and I didn't think it was going to be that a lot of times when I read popular science fiction books I get them and I'm just like I get why people like this it's just not for me but this was not one of them I genuinely believe that this is one of the best books that I read this year in which I could did it make it almost made my top 10 favorite books of the year it did it almost made my top 10 favorite books of the year but I just really loved this book the next book that's in one of my most surprising books of the year, Murder on the Orient Express is worth all of the hype. All of the hype Agatha Christie gets her Murder on the Orient Express is worth it. So in this book, we are following a detective. He is on a train back to somewhere and someone comes up to him and is like, I think somebody is trying to kill me. Like, I think someone is trying to kill me. You're a detective and you need to find out who's trying to kill me. He's like, actually, I'm not going to do that. And you can like leave me alone. And so the next morning they're like, stop because there's a snowstorm and he's dead. They wake up, he's dead. They're stopped for a snowstorm. So now our detective decides to get off his ass and he's like, okay, okay, you're dead now. So let's see who killed you. And they try to solve the murder. I love every moment I loved every moment I loved every character I loved the who done it I loved it I loved it I loved it I couldn't put this in my top 10 because one I didn't have space and two putting Agatha Christie in your top 10 is kind of nasty because she was a nasty woman but <laughs> this book was so good and I'm happy that I read it Next is Witchlings. Witchlings is a book about little baby witches. So after you finish your witchling training, you get sorted into a coven. But three people, well, it don't have to be three people, but in this one, three people don't get a coven. And it's our main character. She doesn't get a coven. And so she becomes a spare. But in order to become a spare, you have to fully like embrace that you're a spare and you have a coven of spares. And our main character doesn't want to be a spare, so she's not really able to embrace that she's going to be a spare so they don't become a coven well when you don't get a coven you don't get powers anymore
anymore. So unless, so in order to keep your powers, you have to do an impossible task. And then you get to keep your powers. You're still going to be a spare, but you at least get to keep your powers. And so she becomes a spare. And so she's a spare. And so she's like, I'll do the impossible task. So her and her two other spares, they do this impossible task. And that's what the story is about. This book was such so cute. It was just so cute. I found that there's going to be a sequel. And I am going to read it. Like this book was just a whole lot of fun. I wasn't expecting to love a middle grade this much. This made me like next year look into more middle grades. I think that's what I'm gonna do because I enjoyed the hell out of this book. Do y'all remember when I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue? I'm not even gonna pretend to remember what this book is fully about. I think you sell your soul to the devil I think you ask for something and then you sell your soul to the devil and then he comes to collect that soul and basically our main character wanted to like live forever or something like that or live fully or all this stuff so like she gets to live forever until she decides to like quit and um until she decides to quit and give her soul to the devil but in living forever no one remembers her like everyone remembers her for only like the time that they're with her and then the next day they just like absolutely forget who the hell she is but she meets a guy who does remember her and she's like whoa this is weird and so they're trying to she's trying to figure out like what is going on why does this guy remember her and also she's falling in love with this guy it's a whole thing i said i didn't remember it but like i vaguely remembered it like um i loved it i did not expect to love it this book gets so much hype i bought the special edition cover i just remembered that and this book gets so much hype and i didn't get it at first i did not get it at first but i get it this book is a perfectly good book like it just is it just it's just really good v.e schwab is just a really good writer i think that's what i remember the most about this book thinking to myself that v.e schwab just really knows how to write a good book she just does she just does and there's nothing wrong with that so you know what v.e schwab i'm giving you a tens this is good book that goes in my most surprising books of the year is the wife between us everybody hates this book everyone talks about how overrated book this book is everyone talks about how they don't like this book da -da 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 -da. this book is good i get this book five out of five stars this book is good this book is about an ex-wife and a current wife and the current wife is trying to get in contact with the ex-wife to see what is going on because stuff she doesn't something is going on with her husband and she wants to tell her about it i don't even fully remember it's so hard to remember what a thriller is about isn't it isn't it so hard to remember what a thriller is about i i, I don't even know if that's really what it is i know she She's stalking the wife it's a whole thing but I like this book I really like this book I gave this book five stars so many people told me I wasn't going to like this book this is a domestic thriller done right I enjoyed my reading experience with this book I think you should pick it up the next one is good girl complex don't judge me when I say I like this book like here like Huh, this book being this book having five stars on my Goodreads has just caused so much drama, drama, drama. I liked it. Like sometimes every every year I have a book where it's just like I know it's not good, but I enjoyed it, and so I can only rate a book by my taste. And like I I enjoyed it. It gave very fan fiction. It did. It gave very fan fiction. By the way, this is just about a girl who like decides to go to college after she's built this like tech empire and when she gets to college um there's this guy who lives in the local town the college is in and he has a bet to start dating this girl and so they start to date and she finds out about the bet and like it's a whole thing and she has a boyfriend and it's a whole thing like whatever that's how they that's how he gets into the bet because her boyfriend is the guy who he got in a fight with at a bar one day and it's a whole thing whatever whatever i liked it I really, really did. I had a fun time with this book. Everyone hates it. And you know what? Y'all are entitled to y'all opinion. I'm not saying this is this is top flight of literature, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. And Good Girl Complex. <laughs> that book, I don't know. I don't know. You thought I was gonna you thought I wasn't gonna stand on it? I'm standing on it. I gave it five stars and I stand on it. I liked it. And so much so I haven't read Bad Girl Reputation. It's somewhere up there but i will i will and i hope i enjoy that one too i don't know or i'll come to my senses and honestly i think if i reread good girl complex i like it again my next surprising book 
American royal. So this book takes place if America didn't have presidents and senates and congress and all of that stuff. If America was royalty. We are following the first family of America as royals. So the Washingtons. They are royalty kings and queens and we are following the person who is next in line to become queen because she is the first born daughter. She will be queen. We are following her and everything that's happening with that. This book was so much fun. Do y'all remember the weekend I read these books? This book was so much fun. I did not expect to have, I bought this book because I thought I was going to have fun with it, but so much time had passed that I didn't think I was going to still love it. And I did. I read all three books in the series. Nothing, nothing, nothing is better than this one. This one is the best one. There's another book I think coming out next year that I will be reading, but I loved this. So, most surprising. The next book is The Layover. I was, I bought this book on a whim. I think I bought it from Target one day and I just read it and it was so great. And it was so great. This book is about a woman who is getting married. Her husband is a lawyer and he's like, girl, you don't need to work no more. You don't need to work anymore. You should quit being a flight attendant because being a flight attendant means you won't be able to fulfill your wifely duties, which is staying at home and cooking dinner for me because you're going to be all over the place if you're a flight attendant. So she decides to quit her job and become a wife, a stay at home wife. So she has one more flight to do. Now, when she goes to this one last flight, she meets this guy who kind of has a bad reputation in the industry. He used to be a pilot and people don't know why he's not a pilot anymore and all of that stuff and so they, he's on the layover with her and this is about how they build a relationship while they're on this layover from their flight it was so cute it was so cute it was so easy to read it was just a really solid romance i loved all the other aspects that was going that were going on in the book and i didn't expect to love it but i loved it the last book that we have, Instructions for Dancing. I almost unhauled this book. Thank God I did it. This book almost made my favorite books of the year, but I was like, I think it was more surprising than my favorite. Like if I would have went into this book with high expectations, it would have just met them. So I think it's more surprising than to be in my best. This book is about two people who come together to join a dance competition and them falling in love. This book broke my heart. This book had me thinking about life. This book had me, it just did everything. I cried at the end. I cried at, a, at the end of a lot of books this year. Like, whoa, not me in my emotional era. But I just, I loved everything about this book. So obviously, all the books I talk about in this video, I recommend that you read. But that does not mean I think you're going to enjoy all the books in this video. Like, not all of the books are, like, going to be your cup of tea. They're just my cup of tea, you know? They surprise me. That's why you got to give. I don't say you have to give every book a chance. I think my reading year ended up as piss poor as it did because I gave every book a chance because this video was not hard to make. It was not hard to gather up my most surprising books of the year because most books just flat out just disappointed me. Most books just flat out disappointed me. So, but there were some surprising ones in here. I think you just have to know when 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 to hold them and when to fold them you know when to just be like let me let this go and when to give something a chance just a lot of books that I read this year I should not like did I need to read where the crawdad sings like I thought that where the crawdad sing was fine but I just didn't need to do it an anonymous girl did I need to read it like I'm looking at the books right now because all my books that I read this year are over there for another video and like some of these I just didn't need to read and like I knew that but I always just think uh, you always think you never know when one is going to be good. It's this list why you give every book a chance sometimes because you're like what if it's great because a lot of these books were great to me. Anyways that's the end of this one. I will see you guys in the next one.